Their son was brutally beaten, and they're calling this a hate crime. He said, you need to get out. Your mom, you and your family don't belong here. Go back to Africa where you belong. And they just kept hitting me. It's those words that led Jason Gardner's family to claim he's the victim of a hate crime. On June 6th, he was beaten down by the creek by three boys and left nearly unconscious. According to the Gardners, this all started months ago over a girl. His mother, Lakeisha, says she contacted the police multiple times. Why couldn't this have been avoided? So why have we shown proof of what's been going on? Threats against his life. Nothing happened. On June 5th, 2017, my 15-year-old son, Jason, was out and about. Jason knew he had a curfew. His curfew was 10 o'clock p.m. But at 10 o'clock p.m., when no one seen Jason or could understand where he was, I went out to look for my son. I thought the worst. I knew something was wrong because I know my children. And he's never a kid that will miss curfew. He likes going outside, so he comes in on time. But I knew something was wrong. I did not expect what we found. And what we found was my child barely breathing. My child left beaten badly, alone cold, wet, in a creek. My neighbors were helping me look for him. While everybody was looking for him, this stranger just yelled out, found him. And at first, it was like a relief until we heard somebody call 911. And as soon as I heard that, I dropped. Right in the middle of where we were standing, I just dropped. I was terrified at what he had found. I was so scared. I yelled at my other son and told him, go and wave down the police and let the police know where we are. So him and the neighbor walked off and they left to go and do that. When the police arrived, we took him to the back where Jason was. While I'm standing there waiting on him to pull my child out, someone else approaches me and says, your other child is in the back seat of that police car. And I'm like, what? Why is he in the backseat of a police car? And they said, well, they said he's the suspect. And then I saw the paramedics bring Jason out on a stretcher. He, he didn't look like my child. And even then, I thought the worst. I thought he was gone. I didn't think I would see him again. Not alive. When I got to the hospital and found my son there in that bed, I seen whips, bruises. I seen a shoe print in my son's stomach. I seen scratches around his neck as if he was scratching to get something off. He had so many bruises, he had so many scrapes. I was scared to even touch him. I went to hug him and he jumped. To see him so beaten, so bruised. He had a, a ring around his neck that went completely around his neck. It was like a burn. And there was a rope at the scene. I think that they put that rope around my son's neck. And I think that they drug him. I believe that they hung my son. What happened to my son was preventable. They had threatened him several times before about lynching him, and that's exactly what they did. Because we're black. Our family did not deserve to be bullied out of where we pay rent to live. I was at a friend's house. I asked my mom, can I go outside? She said, yeah. And um, I went to that friend's house. Um, it was time for me to go in. And I was going home, I was riding my bike, and like, Three gentlemen came up to me, boys, teenagers. Um, Did they you know said, them? I knew one of them. I just knew one. We were, we were friends. And um, he said, your friend, that I was, the person who I was with, uh, she's going in the creek. She's going to hurt herself. She's going into where? To the creek. Oh. 
she had a knife, she's gonna hurt herself. So I ran down there to want to help, I want to save her. So she wouldn't do anything. Um, I called her name three times and I turned back around, I got hit. And I fell to the ground, I tried to cover up my face, but it didn't help. They stomped me, they kicked me, they punched me. Even the one kid that you knew? I don't know, I really don't know because... You were I, just getting hit, it was that night? Yeah, I was just getting hit. We started getting threats, started getting more threats, and... And what were the threats? That they were gonna cause harm to you? Yeah, they what? was gonna do things to my family, harm my family. Uh, somebody spit on my mom. Um, there were dead animals put placed on our porch. Um, one day, two, two men came from out of someone's yard and they were walking past and um, they were trying to walk through my yard. My mom was sleeping in the living room and I didn't want them to walk through the yard. So I politely asked, can you please not walk through the yard? You're gonna start on my mom. He asked, are you asking me or are you telling me? I was like, I'm asking you. He's like, you're not gonna make me do anything. And I was just in shock, like, what did I do? And another, the other dude was next to him. They were both intoxicated. He was like, no, I leave him alone. We're gonna have somebody come back and do that to him like they did in the creek. And I was just stuck, like, y'all know about that? And he was like, yeah, we know. And he wanted to fight me. I don't know why. Grown man, I don't know why he wanted to fight me. And the other dude, he walked away. And I'm arguing with that one man. And all of a sudden, here come another dude. The dude who disappeared, he came up and he put a gun in my head. He put a gun in my head. He tried to pull the trigger, but it, but it jammed. The gun jammed, and my little brother was outside, and other family members was outside, and they saw that. And it just my life flashed before, before my eyes when, that, when he pulled that trigger. Why did you want to be on the show today? I wanted to be on the show today because I'm a big fan of you. And I don't talk to anybody about my problems, but it seems that as if I like your show so much, I feel comfortable telling you, like, I see you as my idol. Thank you. First, I want to just let you know that you are extremely strong. I am so proud of you. Mm -hmm. You're going through a lot. And what's a little, not a little, I would say, especially if it was uh, in your shoes, that this horrific crime happens and there doesn't seem to be justice. Nobody's been uh, brought to punishment. Uh, and obviously, they must know who did this, I would assume, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, he's been charged. Um, one out of three was charged. And, you know, right now we're awaiting, awaiting trial, Friday, actually. Uh, we know that you have suffered quite a bit because of this incident, having to move. So uh, what the show would like to do is we're going to give you $5,000 to help you. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being on the show, telling your story, and if it reaches one person to open up their eyes and accept everybody for who they are, it's, it's, it's a long process, it's a long road, but you got to take a step somewhere, right? Thank you for coming on the show. Well, since we were on the show, we had trial, and when we went to trial, the defendant was found guilty. Um, today we are going to his sentencing. When I found out that he was guilty, I kind of felt relieved, like some of the weight came off my shoulders. It really bothers me 
to know that this kid will be slapped on the wrist for this. And... I'm a little nervous. Like, I'm wishing that I get justice. I hope that I get justice. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? It's that time. But when we left the show, when we got home, we had a sit down talk with everybody. We told them that Steve Wilkos gave the whole family $5,000. And I think my son fell out the chair. It seemed like their Christmas list just kind of shot up. I think that's where the kids' minds were at. But to be honest, it came in a time where we had nothing, where everything was falling apart from losing everything. So it came in a time where we needed it the most. The bills that were piling up, that felt like we were drowning and were able to be paid. And that feeling alone, knowing that we would be okay now, you know what I mean? We don't have that burden of all of those bills and all of the stuff that had us scared. We kind of just got ahead of that. So that's a beautiful thing and we owe it to the Steve Wilco show. I'm afraid that he might get let off. So if he is sentenced to jail time, then I feel like I can sleep. Like, I can live my life again. Even with a guilty verdict, we still feel as though we were defeated. Like, after losing it all, I feel like we should not have had to move. We should not have been run away from our home because of the color of our skin. It, sh it shouldn't have happened like that. He was convicted of a level five felony. He's a minor, so they try to rehabilitate minors. The least that he may get would be probation. As you know, the most that he would get is probably a year's jail time, but they rarely do that is what they told us. We're praying that maybe the judge looks at this and says, okay, you know, with everything that you've done and caused, you deserve jail time. But the reality of it is, is Indiana does not have hate crime laws. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that Indiana gets a hate crime law. So if anything like this ever happens again, that defendant will know you will not get away with it. You physically go and lay hands on someone and you beat them and you kick them and you use items like ropes to detain them, to drag them, to do what was done to my child. You're no longer in that stage of a minor. You're doing things that a lot of grown people don't even do. I feel like jail time is what he deserves and I'm praying that that's what he gets. I'm scared of the outcome. Me too. Me too. You did the crime like an adult, he can do the time like an adult. That's right. Ain't no such thing as a, he's a good boy. He wasn't a good boy when he thought on it and when he did it. So we hoping for jail time today. You know that feeling of like, oh my God, everybody's staring at me like, why is I'm, you know what I mean? It's just that Sinner anxious attention. feeling. Yeah, like, I don't like it, you know what I mean? We got this, okay? Okay. We just got out of the sentencing. He was sentenced to 30 days in jail and probation afterwards. I'm hurting because I, I feel as though, you know, for a crime this serious, that's that's really nothing. But again, we're grateful. But who was thinking about rehabilitating my baby? My family. I just hate seeing my parents in pain and like, I hate seeing them. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but when I see them upset, even though I'm upset, I try to put on a smile just to make them smile. I try to put on this face, just try to make everybody happy because everybody is so used to seeing me, oh, Jason smiling, he happy. But when that happened to me, that took everything away from me. Them smiles that you see, it's not real. I'm just coming clean to say it. it's not real. I'm, I've been wearing a mask this whole time, but it's time to take off that mask and show the world how I really feel. A part of me has maybe still in that creek, but my mom got me and my family got me. 
I called you, Steve, for help because I watch your show all the time. Somebody's gonna watch this and say, you know what, she was brave enough to do that, I can do that too. Do you want to tell your story on the Steve Wilco Show? Visit the link in the description to get my help.